Now, Merkel, it's, is it the end? I will start with you, Florian. Is it the end of an era? You said this was, this was a surprise. Well, it is the end of an era, of course. You said it before. She's been Chancellor for 13 years. She's been at the head of the CDU, her party, for the last 18 years. It's, of course, the end of an era. It's not... It's surprising that it happened today. Of course, Merkel is not immune against the inevitable that after, uh, after two losses and two uh, election defeats, as you just described, it is, of course, uh, time to draw consequences, even for her. Yeah, it did seem that for, for a very long time she was invincible. She, mm -hmm. she was really very much at power. When did it start going wrong for her? I mean... Well, politically, probably in 2015, when the controversial decision was made to allow refugees uh, into Germany. But I think this decision of hers today also buys her time in a lot of ways, very characteristically Merkelite decision, because it gives her time to focus on the Chancellor and perhaps finish whatever she started and leave a legacy that she would want to leave behind. Yeah, but what does a Europe without Merkel look like? I mean, we've seen well, her... I think, well, this is, the, this is the thing, because we haven't been used to it for a long time. As you were saying, in, she was, got elected to the CDU chair in 2000. This continent had only just started using the euro. Jacques Chirac was mm -hmm. the president of France. In 2005, when she became chancellor, like, we weren't using iPhones. They didn't exist. No one had heard of Facebook, really. And Tony Blair was still the UK prime minister. She's been around for so long. And irrespective of whatever you think this, and it is the beginning of the end, um, you know, she's been a rock of stability uh, and a steady hand on the tiller, not just of Germany, but of the European Union. And this place, you know, there's, a, there's definitely a sense of apprehension because when you look around... Who's going to fulfil that role? Well, it may be well who takes over from Angela Merkel. The, the guiding light that was meant to be Emmanuel Macron, well, that simply, or he simply, has not stepped up to that plate. Yeah, and indeed, we're looking at a lot of these uh, shifts already. So we're looking at uh, what shifted for Germany's parties. Support for the CDU and the CSU has fallen from 40% in 2015 to 25% in 2018. The SPD has gone from 24 to 14%. The Greens have gone from 10% in 2015 to 19% now, while the AFD has shot from 6 to 16%. And uh, AFD leader Alice Swedel tweeted after the vote in Hesse yesterday, saying the AFD is now firmly established in the German electorate here to stay. Florian, AFD, they've, they've really gotten a foothold. Do, do you see them as a legitimate party that's going to keep growing in Germany? The other thing is, just to add on what you just said, the AFD wasn't around in 2005, mm, right. uh, yes. let alone in 2000. Um, they started off as a Eurocritic uh, party, uh, being critical of the of the uh, you know the, the common uh, uh, of the eurozone, uh, of course, in the past years and since uh, 2015, in in particular, they shifted even more to the far right, being a, a very hard uh, migration uh, critic party. Of course, it has changed the whole uh, the whole spectrum of, of German politics, and then uh, this uh, uh, rise of the Greens is a uh, is something rather new. Uh, we didn't see that last year, in last year's elections, of course, they did well. But the uh, results that they had now in Bavaria two weeks ago and in Hesse last week are really um, a kind of a, as if the pendulum swung back somehow, yeah. you know, as if uh, people in both camps were disappointed by the CDU. <clears throat> they lost votes to uh, the far right. They also lost votes to the more centrist forces, like the Greens are portraying themselves, at least uh, successfully, at the moment. Well, uh, isn't and, and that slightly the problem is that this is certainly not just about Angela Merkel. It's not as if, oh, Angela Merkel's going to step back from the scene and everyone's going to rediscover what they loved about the CDU. Mm -hmm. as, as you were pointing out, in both Bavaria and in Hesse, uh, they have uh, lost votes to both the right and, and the if left, you're going to put yeah. the green slightly on the left, mm -hmm. to the left. So where, that means where does the party then go? Because it's seeping support on two different very two different, very, very different angles. Uh, and, and that's the question, and that's the trouble for the party. It's not just who should succeed Angela Merkel, is in what direction to this party, which has been one of the most successful political parties in Europe, where does it go next? Yeah, and, and that's interesting ahead. because already at EU level, the CDU as well as the EPP, its larger European family, is struggling with the exact same question, where to go. Should we go toward the right to uh, get back the votes from AFD or should we hold the centre and open up to uh, left it? Left so without voters? Angela Merkel now, maybe is this a chance to steer Europe in another direction? I don't know. I would start in German, if you ask me. Uh, and <clears throat> that very question is, of course, the question that the CDU has to ask itself. Who to pick for the success, who to be the successor of Angela mm. Merkel? Is it a candidate very close to her, more or less 
more of the, the same, same. Mm. Uh, or is it someone uh, like Jens Spahn, who put forward his candidacy already this mm. morning, Germany's health minister, uh, what do you who's been, who's been an, an outspoken Merkel critic? I mean, it's really too early to tell today, right. um, because that debate will take another few weeks and we'll know the answer on and December while, 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 while this is happening yeah. in, on the political political level, obviously, uh, people it's the people who were essentially leading uh, the change in Germany. So let's find out what Germans are actually really feeling and uh, thinking on the ground. For more on that, we have Alex uh, in the cube. Uh, in Lyon, Alex, what do you have for us? Well, Tessa, I mean, have a look at this. From Chirac, Jacques Chirac, to Emmanuel Macron, from President Obama to President Donald Trump, other leaders have risen and fallen. The world has changed. Uh, we've gone from the financial crisis to the migration crisis, momentous events sweeping the continent. And Merkel has been a central figure, hasn't she, all the way through. But now we have an end date. And for many people, you know, she was called Mutti, you know, mother in Germany. Other people called her the Queen of Europe. So now the questions actually are going beyond just what Germans are saying to what Europeans are saying. What does this mean for the whole of Europe? Well, let me just start off by focusing in on Germany. Matthew Goodwin pointing out that over the last four years, the AFD have risen. Now the Greens are on the rise. So we've gone from this near certainty of a Merkel-led country to what next, he asks here, where next for German politics? And actually, if we're leaving Germany, we're going away from the continent and to Britain, leave.eu, who are, of course, the Brexit-backing uh, group. They point out, Merkel, she's going. Macron, another uh, very fond of the European Union here, seen as a leading light, potentially. He's weak, whereas Salvini, Eurosceptic, is strong. Orban is defiant. They are saying Merkel's exit is part of the collapse of the European project. Of course, that is, uh, they have an ideological uh, uh, horse in that race, shall we say. But when people talk about her legacy, what does it mean? Well... Michael Heaver, one of many, saying the legacy of Cameron in the UK was the rise of UKIP and Brexit. So for him, Merkel's legacy is the rise of the AFD after the migration problems. Then we have other people pointing out, like uh, Mehdi Hassan, who praises her, takes an opposite view on the migration issue, praises her, but says, do not forget Greece. Do not forget Germany's role in imposing austerity on Greece. So what I mean here about this being a discussion, not just about Angela Merkel's role within Germany, but the role she's had in shaping the continent as it is now. And one interesting person, um, Alberto here, is the uh, Europe editor for BuzzFeed News, saying perhaps her most important legacy, if we are going to talk about Germany, is making the CDU, moving it to the centre of politics and saying her decision today is in it trying to protect that legacy. But he's saying here how fragile it is. So, again, a lot of people on social asking, will Merkel last as long as the end date she's given herself? And, unfortunately, that's a question I can't quite answer this afternoon, Tessa. Thank you for that, uh, Alex and our team in the Cube. All right, before that, we were, we were talking about Europe's direction. Well, where do you think that was headed? Uh, well, I think this is going to be the challenge that's going to face uh, whoever takes over. Uh, now, you will know more about this than I will. And my sense is I cannot see how Angela Merkel will be Chancellor in 2021. Um, I mean, surely when you start the train of I'm leaving office, uh, people start to circle. Um, crises become much more difficult and your authority simply seeps away. Mm. You know, in the United States, they call you a lame duck president. I would have thought that would happen here with Angela Merkel. Well, she said for years that she, for that very reason, she would never separate the two offices, you know, the, her the party chamber. office yeah. and the chancellery. Now, uh, she's had seven, uh, second thoughts, of course, for, for uh, good reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but, of course, she's very well aware, and she said it in her press conference this morning, that this will weaken, to a certain extent, her authority and that it might become more difficult. Now, I think, again, depending on uh, who is going to be her successor uh, in the party chairmanship, um, that can be you know, more smoothly in some cases than in others. Uh, if there's somebody like Annegret kamp karnbauer uh, who's very close to her, yeah. is very similar in style, uh, you can imagine that the two of them get along very well. Uh, in other circumstances, that could be very indeed. difficult indeed for the Chancellor, uh, you know, to hold get the grasp sure. of her own party, so basically. A, and it might take, actually, a long time for, for CDU to figure out which direction to go, as we discussed well, we before. Will be, 